guys, it's GB from Income Babes. If this is your first time to my channel, welcome. And to my current subscribers, thank you so much for sticking it out with me. Today is another exciting day because we are going to be making some more stuff. Okay. As a beginner at cash stuffing and budgeting and bookkeeping and saving challenges, I'm just going to use as much time as possible to make sure that I have everything prepared. So I've made myself some more challenges. I I purchased myself a laminating machine and some laminating sheets, as well as some stock paper or stock card. So I'm currently addicted to just making a lot of stuff. So these these templates may or may not be on my Etsy store, but you can actually make these yourself. I have a Canva Pro subscription, so because I have the subscription and I'm paying for it. I'm definitely going to be getting my money's worth. So this is a savings challenge that I created. Um, I mean, everyone does a variation of this. So this is my double dice rule savings challenge. You will need two dices. I've assigned a certain amount to each dice. So whatever the numbers is would be the amount that I save. Now, these are three on a card. You don't need to use this A4 size. So I usually just laminate them and then I cut them down and transfer them over to my savings challenge binder, which is this one. My binders have changed at least five or six times and they're probably gonna change some more. So I've laminated them, I've cut them down and I've stuck them into this one. So on my Etsy store, they are available in A4 and you simply have to print them out, cut them like how you like. So it's just simple. You just kind of just roll your dice and see what number you line on. So we've got a six and a two. So for this month, I will be saving 30 plus 10, which is 40. So that's just an example of how to play that. So you can play this as often as you like, but because the amounts are a little bit on the higher side, I definitely only do this once a month. This is the random month savings challenge. We talked about this in one of my other binders, um, but I wanted something just kind of black and white. So there's a number of different ways that you can play this. You can actually assign an amount to each month. You can go with the numbers that are in each month, or you can do a random month generator. Just put all of the 12 months in like an online generator or in a box. Shuffle the box, take one out, and whatever the amount is for that month, then you put it into your savings envelope. So that's that's another that's three ways you can play that one. Then I talked about the random alphabet savings challenge before. So each letter in the alphabet is assigned to an amount, and you can put all of the names into a box, or you can use your phone and just do a, a generator and a random alphabet generator, and whatever um, alphabet that you get, the amount associated with it, you just kind of save that amount. So that's. Or you can just kind of create your own, your own amount. I should have actually put one of these here so that you can, um, you know, assign each alphabet a particular number. But maybe you can just circle the amount that you want all numbers to be, all of the letters to be. And that's, that's probably another way that you can work that out. Okay, so like I said, I laminate them, I cut them down, and I put them into um, my saving challenge binder. So let's move on to the other uh, savings challenge. We've talked about my random stamp challenge in one of my other binders, but I actually decided to just create a savings challenge card. And this is going to be my EU travel savings challenge. I mean, travel savings challenge. I live in Ireland and I would like to go to all of these European countries over the next, I don't know, maybe 10 years or so. So this is going to be a specific challenge. I'm saving funds to go to different parts of Europe. So I've been to Belgium, I've been to Germany, I've been to the Netherlands, I'm living in Ireland. I have been to, is there any place else that I've been to on here? So no, I've got lots of, lots of traveling to do. So yeah, actually it's only three, Belgium, Germany, and the Netherlands, and I'm currently in Ireland. Now I have been to Scotland and England, and I've been to Northern Ireland as well, but they are no longer part of the EU. Otherwise, it would be on here as well. Uh, so that's my other saving challenge. So this one is called Save the Date Savings Challenge. Basically, um, on any given month, there are 30 days in the month. So I kind of just divided the numbers up on different months. So for the next month, which is June, 
on the 11th, I have to save $11. On the 18th, I have to save $18. And on the 24th, I have to save $24. So I'll just add all of that up and see what that amount is. And probably just round it to the nearest five and uh, save it for June. Or you can assign an amount to each calendar month. Or you can do a random generator and just pick any month and see what those numbers are. So that's, again, that's three ways that you can play that. And then I have a date night savings challenge. So this, you don't need to go on a date with somebody else. There are such a thing as solo dates. So you can have a solo date. You can have a couple date. You can have a best friend date. You can have a co-worker date. You can have any date that you want. You can have a kid's date, family date. So this is my date night savings challenge. Um, uh, this is really important because I've not had one in a very long time. So I'll just be using these as an opportunity to save some funds towards that so I can assign an amount there. So those are basically all of my saving challenges. And again, I laminated them, I cut them down, and I put them into my binder here. So I have lots of saving challenges. Um, and I actually have others in the back here as well. These are just empty ones um, that I printed just in case I need something extra. So in addition to creating those on Canva, um, I needed to create slips. So I worked in the bank for nine years and I can absolutely tell you, excuse me, <clears throat> I can absolutely tell you some of my favorite customers were the ones that were really organized. All of the cash, all of the airs, you know, the little corners that kind of roll in, they were smooth out. All of the denominations were in descending order. <clears throat> no, is it descending or ascending? No, I think it's ascending. And um, they were just organized. So I just, I love the customers that just didn't have everything all mashed up and threw it at me and just wanted me to sort it out. And it takes so long, you know? So I've created um, my bank teller withdrawal slip. So whatever amount that I need for my savings challenges, I... So for example, I need fives, I need 22 fives, which is gonna to total to 110. Or I need five tens, and that's gonna to total to 50, and then I'll have the total amount here. So I've actually created, I, cut, I put, I laminated those, and then I've created the slips here. So that's the bank teller when I'm taking funds out. If I have to go back to the bank and I need to deposit that amount, I also have a bank teller deposit slip. So that is, uh, two now i noticed that a lot of people when they get a certain amount they put in cash placeholders and i do not want to have multiple cash placeholders so i've just created this one a single one when you reach 500 you deposit that to the bank you can color it in when you reach a thousand you can deposit that to the bank and you can color it in and you'll just have one single card for each you know challenge or savings goal that you have so rather than having 100, 500, 1,000, multiple ones, you just need one simple one. And even if you were to get to 6,000 and you decided I'm going to save another 5,000, just add on. You can leave the 6,000 colored and then 500. So you know that it's 6,000 plus 500 if you decide, you know, just keep adding it up. So this is editable as well. So I just thought this was a little bit more easier for me in terms of I don't want to have multiple cash holders in different amounts. I just want to have one that has all of the amounts. That way I can track, you know, like this, I can track the cash that I have in the bank. So those are the three important slips that I've created. Again, it's on a A4 like this and you just print it out and you can just cut it up to your satisfaction. So that's what I have been busy doing, trying to get prepared for my savings challenges. Now let's get back to the vellum. I wanted to make vellum envelopes and I did buy some extra stuff that I felt like I needed. Um, excuse my chair creaking. I need a new chair. I should probably do a saving challenge for a new chair. Um, I did mention in my last video that I purchased some vellum paper, which is like that clear frosted paper. It's quite trendy here on YouTube. A lot of people have vellum cash envelopes. Um, I didn't have an A6 pole, uh, hole puncher. So this is the one that I purchased off of um, Amazon. So that's my A6. Um, and I wanted to get a stronger uh, laminating set, laminating sheets. So right now I have an 80 micron and I decided that I wanted to get a 100 micron because I see that with the vellum envelopes, 
they use a softer one in the middle and then the outer one is a little bit more stronger so i'll be giving that a try and i showed you the vellum paper already in the last video what i've done is i printed all of my categories so like i this is the outline and it's the exact same size as this so basically i have printed this as a tracker a removable you know tracker sheet and then i'm going to create an actual envelope that, that corresponds with the tracker so everything will kind of match let me just grab the vellum sheet that i created for this okay so this is what the vellum sheet looks like it actually reminds me of wax paper that we like you know what you bake cookies on so this is what it looks like and then you just kind of print, put this paper into your printer and then you can print the same documents now it's it is quite a bit of work so don't underestimate how much work that you have to do so the first thing that i did for my tracker and you can see this one has a little bit of texture on here so it's a lot of trial and error and you will waste there will be wastage so i printed it on a cardstock paper then i laminated it and then i cut it down so that's basically what you need for your tracker so you need your cardstock you need to create this which i created on canva and then you need a laminating sheet to create your tracker i took the same thing that I printed on the cardstock and I then printed it on vellum paper. Okay, so we're gonna be doing some vellum or try to do some vellum envelopes. Now what I understand with the vellum envelopes based on videos that I watched is that you're gonna need one piece for the front and if you want the back frosted, you need another piece for the back. From what I understand. So we're going to have to cut this, right? Then, so I'm finished with this. Uh, so we're just gonna push this back into my my bank. My well, this is my savings challenge, but this is also going to be the bank bag or the bank challenge bag or the bank wallet, the bank binder. I don't know. I'm just gonna put that away for the minute. So. Now that we have our two vellum pieces, now from what I watched videos, you also need two pieces of a laminating sheet, the same size as this. So I'm going to use the other laminating sheet that I currently have, which is 80 microns. And then we're gonna sandwich them together and put them into the 100 micron, and hopefully it works. So give me one minute to get those two. Now, I've got the 80 micron laminating sheet. What I'm going to do, and I hope it works, is try to put them together and then cut them. So, I need all of them to be the exact same size. I really hope this works because I only printed this once and I don't want to have to keep printing it again. So basically, I need to get two sheets of the two thing here. And then I think when you have the two sheets, you turn them on the opposite side. So let's now get my cutter and let's see if that works. I'm going to also turn on the laminating machine so that it's hot by the time that I am ready to, let's move this out the way for a second because I need to cut this. So let's see, I need to cut it to, I don't want it to be too small. Okay, that's done. Let's go as close as possible. Okay, that one is 
done. Now I have to be careful not to disturb. It's like pins and needles. So done. And now for the last part. Let's hope this works. Okay, first one is done. That one is done. Let's straighten this one up. Second one is done. And the last little bit here. Okay, so that one is done. Okay, so if I have this right and I remember correctly, you flip those over. So you take this and you flip it this way, I think. And then you take the back one and you flip it this way. I really hope this works. And then you put it into your thing. So we'll just push that to the side for the minute. So again, we're gonna take this and flip it this way. And it's gonna go to the back, I think. And then this one, you flip it and it's gonna go to the front of this one. Getting it as straight as possible here. That one's done. One more time, guys. Hopefully we do this correct. So we flip it and it goes to the back. And we flip this and it goes to the front. So the shiny side facing each other. I remember that. Try to get it all lined up here. Okay, so those three are done. So now I'm going to uh, grab the 100 micron laminating sheet. So one second. Okay, so this is the 100 micron. So, when I open up my binder, let's see. So I need this piece to be the one that I attach the hole in. So I'm going to have to put them in this way. And I'm just going to have to leave just a bit of space for the hole. So we will put it here. So this is the hard part here, I'm trying to make sure that they're straight. So we'll, right there, right there. Gonna have to straighten that up in a minute again. And here, because we're gonna cut close to the edge. 
of that one. Misbehaving. This one down here, it's misbehaving. Okay, this one is still misbehaving. Are they all together now? Uh, nope. Let's go ahead and lift this up once again. I think I'm going to leave this in, in real time so that everyone can see how much work goes into just one envelope. And I'm just making these for myself and I hope that you can see how much work goes into it so you can decide if you want to make yours yourself or pay somebody else to do it. Okay, stay still, behave yourself. There we go. So, fingers crossed that it all works. And they are slightly cricket. This one is cricket. <sighs> do I really want to straighten that up? Yes, I do. <laughs> Do want to straighten it out. There we go. Okay, I think that's it. We're not aiming for for perfection. So now we're just gonna smooth out the air bubbles that might be in it, in a dirt. And we're gonna now push this through the laminator and hope that it works. Here we go, guys. Finally. Right, so I'm going to push this through one more time or two, let it cool, and then I will be right back. Okay, so here is how it is looking. Um, I noticed, I don't know, I thought it was smudged just a little bit, like maybe the ink because of the, yeah, it does, I don't know, it just looked a little bit smudged, but maybe it's not. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to, cut the top of here to open that seal. We're gonna leave one centimeter for the holes, to punch the holes in. And we're also gonna leave half a centimeter on each side of the envelope, just to make sure that I have enough space to actually fit into my binder. So let's go ahead 
and to see if this worked. See if I managed to get the seal done. Just gonna straighten this up just a little bit. Um, I don't want to break the white line. So we're just gonna, well, maybe. There we go. It's not really straight, is that? Is this straight? I'm gonna have to straighten that up just a little bit, but let's actually see. I think it worked. I think it worked. I, well, let's not pull, let's not get too excited. That's the first part done. Now let's break the uh, seal for this one. They're all crooked, aren't they? They are very much crooked. What have I done? Let's go just a little bit more here. But again, we are not aiming for perfection. We just wanted to see if it worked. So that's really good. So when I'm going into the bank, I can actually just write it down and ask them to stuff the cash in here. Now I'm concerned, this is a little bit on the thinner side. Is my cash actually going to fit into here sensibly? So that's something I did not remember. The size of this should have been enough to fit the bills. I do have some prop money here. I don't know if this is the actual size that euros are. So a 10, a 10 could fit. I don't know if a 20 will. Uh, this is this is a prop 20. Well, maybe. I don't plan to have that. Like, I don't plan to have large cash. Uh, let's try the 50. I don't know if 50, if this is the actual size. So it'll be poking out just a little bit. Yeah. Maybe I was thinking of American cash. They're all the same. And um, back home in the Caribbean. Okay, so let's do this last one here. And then we're just gonna straighten up the sides. So let's break the seal there. Now we need to leave one centimeter. No, is that one? No, what am I doing? Yeah, we need to leave at least half a centimeter on each side. So that's right there. So I'm thinking, yeah, right about there. And we also need to leave just eyeballing it, really. They don't all need to be the exact same. I see bubbles on this side. I'm concerned about that. We'll cut it there. <clears throat> and then we need to leave about an inch for the holds. I mean, a centimeter, sorry. I was saying inch, but that's not correct. So about here. So again, we're just eyeballing. I'll just leave just a little extra. And where did I put my binder? Did I do this correctly? So... When I put this in, it's actually going to be, ah, yeah. So see if this is the mistake that I made just now. I'm basing it on this size here. So what I've what I've I've short myself. I should have made the size of the the borders a little bit longer, 
Or I should have remembered to leave extra space here. So when I'm cutting the vellum and when I'm cutting the card, uh, when I'm cutting the printed vellum that has the printed on it, and when I'm cutting the also the clear vellum for the back, I need to remember to leave an additional one and a half centimeters if I wanted it to come all the way out here to have enough space for larger bills. But I'm okay with that. So that is it done there. I'm just going to push this one through the uh, laminating machine one more time just to make sure that I don't have, I smooth out all of the bubbles. And then we're going to put the hole punch into this, this side here and see how it looks. So give me one minute. Okay, here's the next hard part. Making sure that I have the holes lined up properly. And I'm trying to see how I would do that. I want, okay, so this is where it needs to be. So I need to make sure that I'm lining them up properly. Otherwise, you know, I could have the holes up here and all of that. So this is where I have it here. And if you can see that the holes are there and I can see that it's lined up like that. So if I push the envelope here, part of this is gonna be hanging out to the top and this line isn't lined up with that line. So I need to stretch this out just a little bit more down to the bottom, I'm hoping. And now it looks like the lines are lined up, but now it looks like my holes are all the way down to the bottom there. So I'm a little bit confused to, because if, if my first hole is there, you know what? Let's do this. Let's see if I have the holes in the right spot. I don't nope so I need to bring this down a little bit more then they look like they're lined up now are they I think so so is that we nope that's not where the holes are They're about right there. Push this back in just a little bit. Okay, so I have the envelope. I have this envelope lined up with the bottom envelope. And I feel like I have them on top of each other. So now I know where I'm supposed to position this. I think. And it's all or nothing. So if we've made it this far, I would be very upset if I could not even get the hole right. All right, just now that we know, I know where the hole is. Let's put this away. Come back to that in a minute. I am so nervous. Right, okay. Are we just gonna do this? Okay, we're just gonna do this. We're gonna believe that the holes are right. Moment of truth, guys. So we should have left more space for the holes. But voila. Now let's see if it fits. We're actually going to put this to the front because this would actually be the first important envelope. Okay. 
Wow, you see the difference? Like, I really shorted myself, didn't I? <laughs> so, we're going to learn from that mistake. And we are going to add on an additional two and a half centimeters when we do when we do this again. But it worked. It definitely worked. We're gonna get some prop money. We're gonna stick the prop money in there. So I'm very happy. Like if you, if anyone's out, I've watched a few video, vellum videos. I don't remember every one that I watched, but I did watch. Um, was it the fancy dollar? Maybe I think. Uh, definitely beautifully me and you. Twenty, thirty. 35 40 from the bank has now been deposited into my little envelope guys i'm so happy it worked now if i can just remember everything that i did and all the mistakes that i've made and hopefully you've learned from all the mistakes that i've made you can go ahead and make your own very vellum envelopes to do a better job than i did i'm i'm actually really happy about this and since this is not like 100 percent one of the most important envelopes because again, I do have these here. So if you needed a, an idea to put on Etsy, you can actually send, you can actually sell this as a kit, okay? So you can make the trackers. I don't think the trackers would fit because yeah, they, they're the exact same size. So you can make the tracker and you can make the envelope. Now, if you add on a little bit, maybe another half a centimeter on both sides it might extend beyond so you definitely have to stick to the half centimeters to this each side but you can add just a little bit more here i think and you can add definitely more there that way you'll have more space down here and you can sell this as a kit um is this the right slip actually it's not the right slip you can sell the bank teller deposit slip with a placeholder with a withdrawal slip and then the envelope to put the cash in so that's an idea for someone that may be looking now i did print other like i said i have a ton of these i have them as my the names of the envelopes that i'm going to have in here i, I printed the names I also printed challenges. Give me one second, let me get the other one. So this is the challenge. So now that I know it, I actually need this. I'm not gonna throw it away anymore. So when I'm creating this again, this is going to be, I have to leave a half of, I have, I have to leave, I have to cut this, maybe go down the half of this. So, and then I'll just have the extra half to the top here. So I won't be able to have the full, but I'll probably just have an extra up here. And it'll probably reach here because if I cut this in half down here, that's going to be the space that I need for the top here as well. So the challenges will have their own envelopes. And here is the 52 weeks. So all of these were printed on vellum paper. So there you go, guys. I am beyond happy that it actually worked. And look at how skinny that is compared to this one. So you're definitely going to have a lot in here just to make it look so good nice anyway i've prolonged this video long enough now that you see that it actually works go back watch it again take your pen and paper write down everything that i did and everything to avoid when you're doing it and get stuff in guys so this is very exciting very very exciting oh you know the next thing that i need to purchase sorry um the edge clipper cutter thing here so that this isn't so sharp and stabs you so that's another thing that i'm going to purchase off of amazon just to make them look a little nicer and again it doesn't have to be in black and white it could be in any color if you have a printer so there we go our envelopes are done here are the other two i might actually just i'm gonna fix these just a little bit um, cut off that extra space there.
all right guys thank you so much for watching i really apologize that this video has been really long but i wanted you to see from start to finish how to make your own custom they can be so they can be as different and as beautiful and as unique and challenging as you like you can even use you can even do the vellums as scratch offs if you want so you can put scratch off stickers here remember i told you i purchased scratch off stickers so you can put the actual scratch off sticker here and every time you scratch it off you will actually just deposit into the envelope as well so it's um just be creative guys all right so i will see you in the next video whilst i finish these thousands of vellum envelopes um thank you so much for watching make sure you are subscribed if this was beneficial to you